Ladies and gentlemen, we're pleased to introduce the director of the United States Peace Corps, the new government agency, Robert Sergeant Shriver. In our panel interview today, we will have Pat Boiseau, the editorial director of the WKRC stations in Cincinnati, and myself, Nick Basso. Mr. Shriver, what is the response of the Cincinnati area to the Peace Corps? Well, it's been very encouraging. We have had a very fine conference uh, planned here for Cincinnati, which has been put on in response to questions from this area about the Peace Corps. We've had uh, citizens of uh, Ohio and of Cincinnati specifically volunteer for Peace Corps service. A woman who was dean of one of the departments at the University of Cincinnati for four or five years, a lady named Miss Roseberry has volunteered and is now serving with our group, uh, planning to go to Sierra Leone and Africa. So we're very much encouraged. I'd like to ask you a question about the general purpose of the Peace Corps. I believe when the program was first started, you were quoted as saying that the primary purpose was not to sell America. Could you tell me just what you meant by that, Mr. Schreiber? I'm afraid that that uh, was misinterpreted. Uh, the primary purpose of the Peace Corps is skilled men and women to underdeveloped nations of the world to help these nations develop a free society and a free economy. Now, in addition to that, uh, we hope that the quality of the people in the Peace Corps will be a very fine advertisement, so to speak, for the United States of America, for the kind of society that we all believe in. We don't expect our people, however, to get up on a soapbox and give a speech. We do expect them to be qualified to answer questions about our country and to conduct them in such a way as to impress people in other lands. These are going to be more or less ambassadors of goodwill for the United States? Could we I use that they, expression? Yes, I think they will be. And by being ambassadors, they will slightly, at any rate, be selling the United States, not on a soapbox, but uh, at least through their good works, then. Is that there's the no, idea? There's no question about it. A lady in Denver yesterday gave me a little slip of paper, and it said on it, the best way to export an idea is to wrap it up in a person. And so these will be personal ambassadors, if you will, of the American way of life. Uh, what kind of uh, screening do these people go through that you can be sure that these will be good representatives of the United States? I think they go through the most rigorous screening that any agency of government has ever uh, put on for persons uh, attempting to join the operation. For example, every one of them gets a full field investigation by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI. Uh, they get the psychiatric exams, psychological tests. They go through a long period of arduous academic training here in this country. There's a group, for example, training up at Ohio State. I was there just yesterday, and the faculty members at Ohio State told me they were very greatly impressed by the quality of the people. Now, after all this academic training, physical conditioning, health training, investigations by the FBI, and so on, after all that's done, a special selection panel meets. And that panel decides which of these people will be best qualified to represent our country and to do a good job overseas. There's no uh, age limit, uh, well, beyond uh, high school and, uh, and nothing, nothing beyond college. You, you don't draw a line anywhere for a 50-year-old person who would like to be in the Peace Corps, do you? No, not at all. The, there is a minimum age requirement. You have to be 18, but we have several people in their 50s. Uh, one I just mentioned a minute ago was the dean of one of the schools here at the University of Cincinnati. We have two members of the faculty from Oberlin College up in uh, uh, Ohio, other part of Ohio. Uh, they've been teaching there for a number of years. They're now teaching for the Peace Corps in the Philippines. Now, how about financing this program, Mr. Shriver? The Congress has appropriated $30 million in the operation of the Peace Corps for the first year. And in a conversation earlier this year, when uh, Pat and I imposed our company on uh, uh, you at a restaurant in Washington, you briefly outlined to me a cost per volunteer breakdown. Would you, would you go through that for me, please? Yes, it may get a little complicated, but I'm glad to try and do it again. <laughs> In the first place, we have estimated that the training, uh, support, uh, transportation, education, et cetera, of a Peace Corps volunteer is $9,000. Now, that may be a little bit inaccurate. We hope it will be accurate. We'll prove out to be accurate. Uh, $9,000 per volunteer per annum. Now, in addition to uh, training uh, cost of that uh, the cost of that type, we, in some cases, enter into negotiations with the university, for example, take Ohio State. And when we make a contract with them, we make it on a two-year basis. So for every volunteer who is in a program administered by a university overseas, we have to 
multiply that volunteer by 18,000 because now in this year we have to make a commitment to the university looking ahead two years. We've entered in similar contracts with uh, private agencies such as CARE. So when you add up the total number of volunteers, you multiply some of them by 18,000 because they may be participating in a private agency operation like CARE or university operation and you all multiply others by 9,000. So when you add it all up, it comes out to a program of $30 million this year. How many volunteers does this represent? We hope that it'll be somewhere between 2,000 and 2,300. This year? This, this year. fiscal year. How and large will this program eventually grow? That depends on what Congress thinks of it. How much success we have, how many failures we have. It might disappear, the program might disappear altogether if it is not a success. On the other hand, if it is a success, if foreign countries continue to ask for the Peace Corps to come and help them, and if Congress is satisfied with the performance, then I think it will grow. Is it true that some of the countries who have asked for Peace Corps volunteers will, will help to finance their stay there? Uh, and no. is it true that counterpart funds are being used to finance some of them? Both of those things are true. Every country that we've negotiated an agreement with so far has voluntarily decided to pay some of the costs of themselves. For example, Ghana is paying half of the cost of each volunteer in Ghana. In Tanganyika, the government is putting on a two-month training course in Tanganyika for the benefit of the Peace Corps volunteers. Other countries are supplying all the transportation costs within the country, and so on. There's no country that isn't doing something financially to help the Peace Corps in that country. Is there any danger of uh, duplicity of effort? There are a number of private organizations in the field which for years have been in effect doing some of the work that is now thought that the Peace Corps will do. Is there any, any danger of uh, stumbling into each other, so to speak? Well, I don't think so for two reasons. Number one, the amount of work that needs to be done in most of these countries is so great that if you tripled or quadrupled the number of people there, there still would be plenty of work. That's why most of the mission groups have welcomed the Peace Corps uh, coming to the countries where they already are located. And the second reason is that we don't undertake any project in a foreign country unless the project has been approved by our ambassador in that country, by the people working there in the economic aid program, and, ex and it also, of course, has to be acceptable to the foreign country. This may be a rather technical question, but take the case of Ghana, where we have a program underway. Yeah. To whom is the individual Peace Corpsman responsible in the native country? Is he responsible to the native country leaders, or is he responsible to our own officials at the embassy, let's say? He has, too, a dual responsibility. He is responsible for day-to-day -day supervision to the officials of the foreign country. For example, let's say he's teaching in a school in Ghana. He's responsible to the principal of that school. Otherwise, there wouldn't be any discipline in the school. But also, if he behaves in a way that's against the national interest of our country, our ambassador has a complete authority to remove that person summarily, if necessary, from service in the Peace Corps in the country where the ambassador is located. This may be possible to happen, and it's certainly a hypothetical question right now, but what should happen, say in Ghana, where certainly they don't believe in democracy as we know it, what should happen if, say, the principal of a school in which a Peace Corpsman is teaching would insist that they teach a Marxist-type doctrine? They don't have what to do it. What would happen? They don't have Could to do it. Could the Peace Corpsman leave if you want sure. to, or yes, we indeed. can pull him out? This is a volunteer organization. There's no court-martial procedures. Anybody who wants to can quit at any time. It's a free organization of free men. And that's going to be, in my judgment, one of the greatest services that the Peace Corps perform, performs overseas. It's going to demonstrate in many countries for the first time free men voluntarily doing what they want to do, not on the orders of some dictatorial government. Mr. Shriver, in summary, we don't have too much time left. Why? Why do these people take these jobs at less pay, many of them? Why do they do this? Well, they all have their own personal reasons, of course, but some of them feel that they, A, they'd like to get the educational experience. B, they'd like to do something for world peace. Three, they're humanitarily motivated. They'd like to do something to help their fellow man, and so on, for a variety of other reasons. But I'd say that those are the three most important ones. I think that's just about all the time we have. We want to thank you very much uh, for being with us. Ladies and gentlemen, you. this has been the director of the Peace Corps Agency, Mr. Robert Sergeant Shriver. In the panel today, Pat Boiseau, a face familiar to you, and my name is Nick Basso.